Hi, this is Tom from Rocket Restorations. And today we're gonna do a tour of one of my favorite cars. It is my personal 1972 Dodge Polara ex Washington State Patrol car. I bought this car, it was pretty much, I think it was just out of college, which was like 02, 03. Uh, and this is the first complete restoration I ever did. I love this car. Everybody's got a don't sell list. This is on it. It's really a fantastic car. When I bought this thing, Cudas and Chargers were kind of doing their first big upswing. And, you know, I was a broke kid out of college. You couldn't afford anything. So, you know, I'm also 6'5", so that helps. So, big full-size car, nice comfy seats, 440 disc brakes air conditioning, double foam padded seats. Had to keep the cops comfortable. Also, a power seat, which is pretty cool. Dog dish hubcaps, of course. And this was Washington State Patrol, but it was unmarked. So, State Patrol does this still today. When they have unmarked cars, they are different colors. The Lion cars are white with door graphics. Somebody knows me very well. I really like cop cars. They're kind of my thing. I think we've got seven or eight Washington State Patrol cars now. A couple of CHP cars. As you can see, original spotlight. I did have it painted. It was original paint, 180,000 miles when I bought it. And we basically went through the whole car. It was just a little worn out. It was impeccably maintained. The State Patrol really took care of their cars. State Patrol also got kind of the rare rim blow wheel because they actually used the horn to actuate the siren. So they had a console between the seats, which I actually have one. I haven't put it in here. I will at some point, but they had a console where they'd flip a switch and then all they had to do was honk the horn to engage the siren. So on a State Patrol car in these years, they always got four horn rings or a rim blow to actuate the siren. So you can see right here, it's the seat. The seat covers have been redone and the color's a little bit off from the original, but it's pretty close. But what's neat is, you know, the cops are pretty tall. They actually gave them power seats in a police car, which is pretty unusual. Got some nice police only options on it as well. So on the C bodies on these years from 69 to 73 they had the same basic dash there's a few little differences but the same basic dash but normal non-cop cars got 120 mile an hour speedo the police cars got 140 very desirable speedometer people really like these things and then of course it's certified because if they had to pull you over it had to be certified to be able to write you the ticket Another cool thing on this is a power trunk release, which is right there. So um, it only works with the key on, but it's kind of cool. You can get in the trunk real quick. Let me turn the key on. Let me see if it'll work. Sometimes it wants to be running. It needs a little more juice. Never mind the uh, little bit of a dash pad. And then wiper switch here, two speed wipers, AC over here. Uh, a couple other kind of fun things on this car is they actually have an AC shut off switch. So there's actually a sticker, which I think is in the glove box. It is. So this is really neat. So here's actually a sticker that tells you how this works. So basically what it says is when the heater air conditioner off button is pressed, compressor continues to operate. A special compressor shut off switch located on the other side of the instrument panel to the right of the steering column is provided for use during high speed operation. The switch should also be left in the off position during any idle period following high speed operation. Do not leave the switch in the off position for extended periods. So basically what that means is it basically shuts the compressor off, which is really neat. So it's less drag on the system. Otherwise the compressor is just going all the time. And it's more drag on the engine. You can actually manually shut that off. So if you're going 85 or in a pursuit, you can actually shut that thing off. And this is you know, standard C body stuff, the AC switch, which I had all working when I got it restored, it died. And then we had some friends out from Germany and uh, they actually 
borrowed my car and drove it around a little bit and I got the AC fixed a couple weeks ago. Special thanks to my customer, Don, who his car's over there, that Cornette that's not in focus. But that Cornette was uh, his car. He's actually an AC tech, so we got it fixed. Also has the radio delete plate. Had a radio in it when I bought it, but I couldn't stand it. I had to put the radio delete plate back in. Those are pretty hard to find. And then also has a fast idle. So, and this is not hooked up because I the original Holly carb was a piece of junk, so I replaced it with um, an Edelbrock that works fantastic. Basically what this is, is you could pull it out and pull it over this way and it would lock the idle. So it would give you more revs when you're sitting. So like when the police cars had, you know, sirens and lights going and all that fun stuff, um, it, uh, you needed more idle so the battery wouldn't drain. So it, the alternator, the alternator works at idle, but when there's a bunch of stuff going on, it has a hard time keeping up. So these are kind of cool accessory Mopar floor mats. I'm not sure if the second owner bought these or if they came with the car when the, when WSP had them, but it's pretty cool. They're actually Mopar branded floor mats. Spotlight. Still works, although last time I tried it, it worked. And it also has an inside hood release, which was most CYs had it by these years. Oops, forgot to turn the key off. So the door sticker, and then State Patrol put that uh, reflector on. That's actually something that they did, so they could be seen a little better when the door was open. But yeah, this car is not white because it was a Sergeant Lieutenant's car. I said before, Washington still does that to this day. Um, as far as I know, this is the first application of an overflow bottle in a Chrysler. You could not get a factory overflow bottle in 71. This is the first year. So I've seen it on trailer towing, police packages. It's kind of neat. Um, I won't go into the story of my brother melting the original one by overheating the car on a road trip. Not that I would ever throw my brother under the bus like that, but here we are. He uh, was in California with my dad going to the Mopar Spring Fling Car Show and uh, didn't notice that the fan belt fell off. So they basically ran it till it got so hot the solder on the top of the radiator melted off and the hose blew off and it got so hot underneath the hood it melted the washer bottle it melted the overflow bottle and yeah good times all around factory disc brakes which you know standard in any police car it's pretty cool here's the fender tag and it has special order for police car um you know it's a pretty standard tag i don't know how well you guys know your codes but um, E86 is 440 HP, D34 is automatic, that's the VIN number, D for Polara, M for medium, custom, 41 is four-door hardtop, U is 440 HP, 2 is the year, 1972, D is Belvedere plant, and that's the VIN sequence number, that's the color code, which is gold, I don't remember the exact name of it, I'm sure there's a fancy Mopar name, um, M1 is medium, 1 with, uh, 1 is cloth, Y5 is gold, um, it's upper door frame color gold. SPD is 211. Um, most police cars were built later in the year. Um, February is actually a fairly early SPD for a police car because they were, you know, Chrysler. They were mostly fleet orders, and at the start of the year, you know, they were popular. They were selling stuff to customers, and then when the orders kind of slowed down, they started building the fleet cars, like taxis and police cars and stuff. That's the Vaughn, the vehicle order number. Um, J means special order. So anytime you see J, that's a special order car. And then uh, the rest of that, that's the uh, roof color, which of course, you know, in this car, no vinyl top. It's also a standard color. A lot of police cars would be 999 paint code. This one's a standard color. Uh, U is for US order. Um, I should have looked these up. I don't have these memorized. Those four F codes are all police only codes, um, which I believe are, there's like rough reinforcement. There's like a reinforcement in the back on the, between the shocks, there's like the certified speedo, there's the spotlight. I don't remember exactly what they are. Um, G11 right there is tinted windshield. H51 is AC. L25 is, that's a light. I think that's a dash light, I think. M15 is a molding. That's the coolant overflow. P21 is power seat. B5X is the body side molding. Y14 is ordered car. Uh, Y39 is special order. 26 is the 26 inch radiator. E is end of codes. And on the Belvedere Seabody plant, they actually riveted the tags on, which is nice. They can't get stolen that way or lost. Um, of course, AC condenser for AC. 
still has the correct radiator in it. This car was very original when I got it. Um, it's a numbers matching motor, but unfortunately the tranny is not. And the reason for that is they had all the records for this car and they uh, quote unquote rebuilt the transmission in like 1982. And uh, well, they didn't rebuild it, they just replaced it. So um, air cleaner is kind of neat. It is a, so it looks like a single snorkel, but if you look underneath here, it actually has a hidden flap underneath here. It's kind of cool. It's kind of hard to see in the video here, but there's actually a flap. So under high vacuum application, or it's low vacuum applications, it opens it up to get more air in there, which is kind of cool. Um, another thing they started doing in 72, and I don't know why, is there's an HP manifold on this side, and then it's actually a log manifold on this side. It should have a heat shield on it going up the air cleaner. I don't know where that went. I had it at some point, it was together, and it came off for some reason, I don't remember. Um, some more kind of fun police car-y stuff in here is, see that, uh, there's a ground strap back here, right there. So that middle strap's extra. So they put extra grounds in there for all the, they had all the police equipment and stuff on here. So, um, another kind of cool thing on WSP cars, and this does not have the system on it because it's horribly dangerous, but they actually have a system where they would fill cars up on the side of the road. So see that little kind of cross thing there? That's where they wound up the hose. They actually had a a T off the fuel line, off the fuel pump below the alternator down there. And they ran line there with a petcock. So if somebody ran out of gas on the side of the road, they could just take the hose out and fill the person up on the side of the road, which is kind of cool. But, you know, having open gas or forget to close it on the side of the road is kind of dangerous if you start leaking gas everywhere. So uh, another kind of interesting thing on a, uh, on a 72 Polara, for some reason, that front balance is actually plastic. So. You ever see a front valence for a 72 Polara in plastic? Buy it, because they are absolutely impossible to find. Also, these are not technically factory bumper guards on here. They're called Gem Guards, which is an aftermarket company. But on the broadcast sheet for this car, it actually does show that it has a bumper guard option that's not in, you know, quote unquote, Galen's book or in the order book. So I'm pretty sure Chrysler ordered these, and I think it makes it look fantastic. It almost like it has fangs. The front end of the 72 Polara is definitely polarizing. I like it, but obviously I've had this one for a while, but uh, I think it looks kind of cool. There's like fangs on it basically. And then of course the dog dish hubcaps, with the 15 by six heavy duty wheels. It's a player custom, which again is a fairly unusual thing for a police package. Most police package cars would have rubber floor mats, but I'm not sure why WSP did this. There's been a lot of conversation about it over the years, but see it has carpet instead of rubber floor mats. And there's two reasons that I think. One is I don't think you could get a power seat in a police package car. I just don't think they would do it because you had to get vinyl. And also it was kind of an up trim car. So I think when they sold them, they'd get a little more money for them. So I think it's one of the two. They did that from 69 to 73. They always ordered the up cars, the up trim cars. And then that's the uh, antenna on the roof, the whip antenna, which I have, but I park it in a garage and there's not a lot of room in the garage the antenna gets, so I just keep it off. Trunk. See right there the power trunk release. And then also the WSP only wood shelf. You ever find a wood shelf in the back of a sea body like this? Probably means it was Washington State Patrol. That's where they put the radio equipment. So well, this is my 72 player. This is my baby. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you soon.